Hello Makers In this video I'm going to be reviewing an LA1010 logic analyzer came packaged in a box with only Chinese writing on it and as you can see it's a very compact little device 16 channels and it has two pulse width modulated outputs in the box was also these cables to connect to it these have a ground plus eight wires each and I got some cables to connect to the PWM lines it came with these nifty little plug attachments it goes on the end of these wires and these will actually connect to a pin so you can actually plug these straight onto a pin came with a nice manual all in Chinese oh, there is some English on the back it's just a customer card a uh, warranty card software on the on a CD to install and a USB cable so we can connect it to the computer this thing is powered by the computer and it does a capture and displays it on the supplied software it connects to the computer very easily and from there we can make it work the flashing red light means that it's online not necessarily connected to software so what we'll do is connect it up to something to generate a signal that we can monitor and see how it looks on the software okay I've connected it to this FS IA6B remote control receiver this remote control receiver has six servo outputs on it but it also has the IBUS and the IBUS signal system consists of a uh, servo output and also a sensor bus and I'll get to that one that one's a little more complicated and has a two-way protocol across a single wire there is ground wire which is listed here everything's labeled on here it's quite nice is connected to the ground on this receiver and I'll just plug this in so it's all powered up the flashing LED on this indicates that it's not connected to a receiver yet and that's because I haven't turned the receiver on a little bit more about this logic analyzer before we go any further it runs in several different modes uh, using all 16 channels that this supports it'll run up to 16 megahertz if you sacrifice a few channels and only use nine channels you can get 32 megahertz at six channels you can get 50 megahertz and with three channels you can get 100 megahertz its input voltage range is minus 50 to plus 50 volts and I have actually had it working with 3.3 uh, volts so it's reasonably sensitive I'll turn on the uh, transmitter and now we have a solid LED on the receiver which shows that it's connected this setup uses full telemetry so it's actually transmitting its battery voltage back to this receiver and we can actually see the battery pack here is supplying 5.95 volts to the receiver and because of its close proximity we've also got a signal strength of 10 the battery on the receiver on the other hand is running a little bit on the low side if we look at the uh, positioning of our controls 
you can actually see as I move the sticks around we get signals. So this is a six channel output but the transmitter is a 10 channel transmitter. So let's switch over to the software and have a look at it. Okay, here we have the King VIS software that was supplied with this. It installs very easily and surprisingly enough it's in English. Up here this software supports multiple different models however it is a wake up that we've only got this one and Sony lets us choose that one. We have the number of samples that we can capture and the frequency that we can capture. We can also quickly select which uh, the number of channels we're going to be using and the sample rate. In this case I'm going to grab all, fifth, all 16 channels although I could grab just 12 or 9 but this will do us. 16 MHz is more than enough for what we need. So this is transmitting. I might just skew this up a little bit and hit capture. And here we can actually see what it captured. Now the downside with this is you have to actually hit the capture button to capture the signal. I haven't found a way of configuring it to capture on a trigger yet. It might be possible I just haven't found how to do it yet. Okay so we can see here we have channel 0, channel 1, oh, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4 and channel 5. These are quite two channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 on the receiver. If we look at this one, over on the right, you can actually see we have a width of that section. And that width is 1500 microseconds or no, 1.5 milliseconds. And our signals are coming in every 20 milliseconds. This one here on the other hand, that's one where I've actually pushed the control over a bit. You can see there, it's actually running at 2 milliseconds or 2000 microseconds and this one here is actually the other way at 1.33 milliseconds down here we have a lot more signals going on and it's a little more confusing if we zoom in by using the scroll button we can actually see that here that's a digital signal and that one's connected to the iBus servo output. Over here we have analyzers. So we can add an analyzer. In this case we'll go UART. We're going to look at channel 6. And I happen to know that the board rate on that is 115200. 8 bits, 1 stop bit, no parity. And you can see there that it has decoded the signal and given us a series of readings. The first byte and the second byte. The first byte will always be 20 hex, 40 hex for the second byte. Then this is the representation of channel 1 or servo 1. Now it's little ending first. That means we take the 07 and then couple it onto the D0. So if we actually do the maths on that and convert it and I'll bring my calculator over to so we can see it. Switch to programmer mode, hex and we'll put in the 07 and then D0. And you can see there 2000. If we go back to our 
our channel zero and have a look at the pulse width that was 2000 microseconds so we can actually read each of the channels for all 10 channels coming off here the last two bytes are actually the CRC checksum now I've learnt a little bit more about this other set of pulses this is the sensor bus and it's a little more confusing so let's bring up an analyzer it's running at the same speed so you are channel 7 it's also running at 115200 board and it's the same 8 bits one stop and no parity and what we see here is 048178FF now that's actually a signal being sent by the receiver to anything plugged into that port and all the rest are place markers for the returning signal what I've since learned is that is actually a request for uh, is there a sensor connected and it's something I haven't used yet but it is something that I'll investigate down the track everything else appears to have framing errors and I think that's because it's actually just place markers waiting for signals to come in So this just shows how you can use a logic analyzer to capture a signal and then interpret it. There are a number of other settings and I haven't figured them all out yet. When I do I'll uh, do another video. This is set for 5 volt CMOS. As you can see, we can go right down to 0.9 volt CMOS. So that's pretty sensitive. This will sample for 1.25 seconds at this frequency. So I could, in theory, run at a lower frequency and get a longer sampling time. So let's go say 8 megahertz and resample. I've let that control go so it's gone back to 1500 microseconds. Can I change that resolution? No, it just lets me set. So yeah, very easy to use, there's not much to it, it's easy to set up and easy to run. So I'll see you in the next video.